Hi everyone, we're Amy and Andy of Sunshine and Rain Photography. We're the community directors for SLR Lounge and we're really excited to have Matt Gruber of Matt Gruber Photography on the show with us today. He'll be talking about five proven lighting tips to improve your wedding portraiture. And then we'll take a look at some of his award-winning photographs. So you're definitely gonna wanna stay tuned in and also please chime in. What are some of your biggest lighting challenges? Drop them in the comments below. Awesome. Hey, Matt, thanks for uh, joining us today. And we're really excited that you took the time to uh, hang out with us today. Yeah. So thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you are a wedding photographer based out of Philadelphia and have been racking up uh, SLR Lounge awards. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Matt. Uh, yeah, I've been uh, shooting weddings full time since, I guess, like 2010, 2011. Um, so this is like my eighth eighth or ninth year full-time. Uh, I do about 40 to 50 a year. Um, most in the Philadelphia area, I'm still waiting for people to like fly me all over the world. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I like to have fun. I don't take myself too seriously. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much me in a boring nutshell. That's awesome. So uh, 40, 40 plus weddings a year and you do those by yourself? Yeah, I mean, I always have a second shooter, but right. as far as the business side, it's all me so I do all the shooting editing back-end work all that fun stuff so it's it's a challenge but it's it's good I like it, it keeps me on my toes that is impressive that is. that's <laughs> awesome that's really cool. awesome so um, uh, when we were uh, kind of looking through award winners and, and uh, we we love uh, your photographs and uh, one thing that really just uh, stuck out to us is uh, how your lighting is always on point um, and you. so, you know, kind of when we were chatting with you uh, before this, we talked about um, how you could drop some tips on the community for us. So um, let's uh, let's get right into that, and then we'll take a look yeah. at some photographs. So um, uh, the first the first tip that you had mentioned to us was uh, to uh, get your ambient light uh, kind of dialed in. So what does that look like for you? Um, yeah, I mean, no matter what setting you're in, whether you're outside, indoors daylight, night, whatever. Um, yeah, you always just want to expose for your ambient light first and figure out what you want that to be. Um, that way you have a starting point and then you can just add in, you know, it's whatever uh, flash you need, um, you know, to light up your couple. Instead of just turning on your camera and your flash and just seeing, okay, let's see how it works. Um, you know, so as long as you figure out whatever you want your ambient exposure to be, uh, then you can just add in, you know, flash as needed. Um, I always try to shoot, well, I should say, I always shoot manual um, flash. That way I kind of know for sure, okay, I need to be at like 1 128th power, full power, somewhere in between, um, instead of just putting it in like TTL and hoping for the best. Um, yeah, just figure out your ambient exposure first and go from there. Awesome. Great, great tip. Um, uh, I know one of the other one of the other tips you mentioned was uh, that you need to have a reason to add light. Tell us about that. Yeah, I think a lot of people, especially when they're new with off camera flash, um, you know, they think, OK, I'm just going to use flash and they turn on their flash and just try things um, and they don't get the results they're looking for. Because there's got to be a need for it. You know, if you're shooting at night, obviously, you know, that's like you're probably going to need to use flash or some sort of um, constant light to light up the subject. Um, or if you're doing it for more of like a creative effect, uh, you know, that's awesome as well. You just, there should be a reason for doing it. Um, and that should help your uh, thought process and hopefully get the goal that you're trying to achieve. Um, yeah. So just have a game plan of what you want to do. Have a game plan. Mm -hmm. cool. and, and how do you sort of like, how are you always prepped uh, for any condition? Yeah, I mean, I, most of the time I try to shoot with natural light first just because it's, it tends to be easier. It's quicker. I don't have to set anything up. I don't have to test many things out, um, you know, but if I just want to add like a little bit more flair or, you know, however you want to phrase it to the image, I'm just, you know, spice it up a little bit yeah you know i'll play around with some lights and and things like that um 
but yeah, it, it really depends on the scene and, and what I'm going for. Sometimes I want it to be uh, more subtle where it looks natural. Uh, other times I don't care if it looks flashy or fake as long as it looks good. Um, you know, that's the end, the end result that I'm looking for. Cool. Um, I know in a lot of your, your photographs, uh, that you post in the Magmod community, mm -hmm. uh, on your Instagram that we see in the SLR Lounge community and for the awards, you use a lot of gels. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was actually, um, something that's really intriguing to us. Uh, and uh, that was one of the tips that, that you had mentioned when we were talking. Mm -hmm. So how do you, uh, I guess, what would your tip be as far as uh, corrective and creative gels and, and how you use them? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, there's lots of different ways that you can do it. Um, you know, simple ways of just using a gel, almost like an uplighting. Um, you know, if you're in an indoor space and you have just a plain white wall or whatever it is, or if the room is just hideous, but you want to do something in there, or the couple wants you to take a photo in there. Um, if you just put, you know, like your flash on the ground with the gel on it, whatever color, um, you just kind of point it up at the wall the same way that up lighting works. Uh, you know, that can create an awesome background, uh, you know, that's different than just the average white wall. Um, so that that's some of the ways that I use just color gels um, for creative effects. But as far as like CTO gels and blue gels, mm -hmm. um, there's lots of different ways that you can incorporate them as well. But one of the things that I love to do that um, I actually saw on SLR Lounge a while ago that Pi posted, um, which is kind of like trying to mimicking or mimic a sunset. Because um, a lot of times it's, you know, you're shooting in cloudy conditions or the sun has already gone down. Um, and the couple's like, oh my God, we really want like sunset photos. and I mean, you can't play the weatherman, you know, you can't make it sun. Um, yeah. But using that gel, if you use like an orange gel, which is the CTO gel, you know, behind them, you know, give a little rim light um, in their hair, stuff like that really works well if you're zooming in close. If you're getting like a whole big scene, obviously, you're not going to, you know, make it look like sun. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's like one of my favorite things to do that I've consistently been trying to work on and improve and try to perfect and I'll probably never get there but I'll keep trying. Oh you're super great at it. Seriously. <laughs> oh, thank you. you are. Absolutely. Thank you. And then um if you obviously like you we see a lot of your stuff in the Magmod community so I'm assuming you use uh Magmod mm -hmm. uh, gels and, and their system. Have you always used that? Uh did you did you do something before that? Uh I never <clears throat> When they came around, that's pretty much the first time that I started using like grids and gels and things like that. Um, it was around the same time that I started really incorporating flash into my work. Before that, it was all natural light. Um, but I mean, yeah, their stuff's all great. It's super easy that you can just go from shooting with a grid and doing something a little bit more intricate to putting a sphere on there and getting a little bit more softer or spread out light. Um, and then you can use the gels with anything either by themselves, with grids, with spheres, with a softbox. Um, yeah, so I mean, I love their stuff. Cool, um, so sort of, uh, sort of a related question, but mm -hmm. uh, on the post uh, in the community when, when we uh, posted yesterday about this, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Shivani, uh, who's the uh, awesome marketing director for SLR Lounge, uh, asked a question, and uh, she was wondering, it's sort of related probably to what you were saying about yeah. Facebook, but. What's your go-to lighting setup for quick couple sessions? Um, because one thing that she mentioned was weddings are are so strict in timelines, uh, and that uh, you know we're always as wedding photographers. I think uh, we we sometimes fumble when we're trying to mm -hmm. race the clock and then mm -hmm. start to lose our minds a little bit. So right, <clears throat> yeah, I that's one of the reasons why I love all of the MagMod modifiers um, because you can go from like you know doing something really intricate with a grid um, or backlighting them, front lighting, whatever. You have like lots of different possibilities that you can do all very quick. Um, as opposed to like with a soft box, you got to set that all up, you know, set it all up. You got to open it up. Um, and you're kind of, I mean, you can obviously do lots of stuff with a soft box, but you're just going to get soft, beautiful light with that. Um, whereas opposed to if I have, you know, my flash and I have a grid on there, 
I could do something backlighting the couple, then I can do you know, quickly throw a sphere on there and, and front light them, get something a little bit more flattering, um, and then you know, throw some gels on top of that and just keep going as quick as I can um, or as efficiently as I can without wasting the couple's time and fumbling, setting up other things and other stands. And I just like the couples to be able to you know, party and have a good time without wasting you know, an hour instead of like 10 minutes. Right. Awesome. Great. That's great. Um, so you, have some, you have some comments on there? We do. We have some hellos. Uh-oh. Um, Miguel. Angel? Yeah. It says, what's up, Matt Grubbs? Um, Carrie says, hi, Matt. And Donatas UFO says, hi. And hi, Hi. <laughs> so you've got some friends chiming in yeah, there. Yeah, cool. Uh, Donatas is a fellow uh, award winner. Very cool. From Europe. So, um, cool. Right. Um, <laughs> so we mentioned ambient light. We mentioned having a reason to add light. Oh. We talked about using gels and mm -hmm. how and when you use gels. And next up, uh, share with us about rear curtain sync. That is something that I know our audience at home wants to hear about. Yes, yeah, so that's, I mean, I primarily do it um, for reception lighting. Uh, but you can do it for portraits as well, where you want to get some movement in there, whether it's you have like the streaking car lights or um, sometimes if you're, you know, you have like Christmas lights or something behind the couple. Mm -hmm. um, so if you put your camera uh, in rear curtain sync and you just pan the camera a little bit, you're going to get all those lights to be streaky and, and really cool. Um, so that's something that I love to do. You know, you put the camera at a 30th of a second or a 20th of a second, whatever it is. Um, and that way the, the couple is exposed and they're not blurry, but everything else is blurry. Um, so you can get some really cool effects with that, especially, you know, during the reception, just kind of differentiates it a little bit, you know, from the standard typical reception shots. And are you doing that with off camera flash or on camera? Uh, both, both. Um, for when I do it for, uh, receptions, I typically have the flash on camera. I point it at the subjects. Um, but for that, I usually put a grid on top of it. That way, the light isn't going everywhere. It's just going on, you know, the one or two people dancing that I want to light up. Um, you know, because if you don't have that grid on there, not only is it like a weapon and you're going to blind people, um, but it's just going to go everywhere. Um, if someone was trying that for the first time, you know, at their next wedding, what would be a piece of advice you'd give them? For, for uh, shoot at a much higher aperture. I usually shoot at like f7 to f11 um, when I'm doing that because I you're still going to get like a little bit of blur on the subjects, um, and because you're moving, I want to get more of it in focus. Um, so that tends to help lower your ISO. Uh, that's like the one time that I actually will have my flash in a TTL. Oh. So yeah, okay. definitely. Awesome. Higher aperture, lower ISO, um, and shooting TTL, you know, for stuff like that. That's really cool. Okay, cool. Awesome thanks tips. for sharing your tips. Um, yeah. Shiv says, uh, thanks for uh, <clears throat> answering, her answering her questions. questions. And she also wants to see some of the gel uh, photographs. So we're going to throw some of those up for sure. Cool. Um, your, last, uh, your last tip, Matt, was about um, using flash. Uh, to kind of save the day. Tell us, tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, I, I think I can definitely speak for myself, and I feel like a lot of people, where they start using off-camera flash because they're in a situation where they ended up being screwed. Um, you know, whether it's you're at a venue that has, like, some cellar way, and the couple's like, hey, we want to take a picture down here, and you get down there, and you're like, oh, God. Like, I don't know. Like, you can't bounce the flash. You can't do anything. Um, because it's so dark or you have no ceilings or whatever. Um, you know, so situations like that, getting your, I can't talk, getting your light off camera, um, you know, you can really just light up the couple without spilling light everywhere by bouncing it. Um, or obviously if you're, you're outside at night, you can't bounce your flash. Um, so, if, you know, situations like that, you can definitely make it look better. Or if you're in a really ugly room, um, you know, bride or groom getting ready in some hideous hotel room or grandmom's house that's from like 1970, 
um, and you don't want everything, you know, lit up, uh, and you want to kind of just hide that stuff, you know, throw like one light, you know, on the bride or the groom or whoever, um, and just light that up, light them up, and block everything else out. So stuff like that's really fun. Awesome. So we're gonna we're gonna go into a, a screen share and okay. pull up some of your your photographs and. Uh... Real quick, I'm gonna let you know that Laura Reynolds <laughs> said, "Is that Matt oh, God. Greer? OMG." Laura. <laughs> she's sil she's silly. <laughs> Laura. Daniel Moyer said, "OMG, Matt Gruber is such a babe." And uh, Scott said, "Yo, Matt Gruber." So you got some love. Yo. <laughs> They're all nice people. Yeah, they are. They're incredible. And you're incredible. All right, so we're going to take a oh, look right. of your award-winning photographs. So first up is this amazing photograph that we love. We love the color. We love the red. We love how you used flash on this photograph. So tell us about it. How did you use flash in this photograph? Um, so I kind of have a two-part answer. Going back to, like, the gels, um, right now these columns are all um, uplit by the venue. So that was perfect. Um, I didn't have to do anything, but oh, okay. I could have, you know, put a couple flashes down there in front of the columns with different color gels and just lit them up, and you would have gotten, like, the same effect. But anyway, um, so, you know, the front of this venue is, is beautiful. The couple really wanted to incorporate it. I saw the red was there and just wanted to kind of put them in between the shadows or in the shadows in between the red uh, columns. So I used just, I believe I used just a grid um, on a flash and just lit up you know, their faces and a little bit of their torso, but I didn't want the light going everywhere. Um, you know, so if I used a softbox or I used a sphere or a bare flash, uh, you know, those columns would have been lit up and it just wouldn't have been as dramatic, uh, you know, so just lighting up a little bit of that area with the grid really just made an impact. Yeah, it looks awesome. Do you find yourself double stacking grids often or usually just using one grid? Uh, yeah, usually one, uh, sometimes two. Uh, this situation, I think I might have, I might have used two. It's been a while, so I don't know for sure, but yeah, definitely. Like if you're still getting a little bit of spill, uh, you know, behind the couple on the wall, and if you have an extra grid, you can just throw that on there. And, that should clean it up. And if you have a snoot, that's even better because you can just pull it in and out. And... Awesome. Great. It's beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. You're so kind. You're so nice. Thanks. <laughs> You're so nice. All right. Next up is this photograph. The colors are off the hook in this photograph. We love the silhouettes. Oh, yeah, this... It. This... Uh, I just used two flashes. Uh, they were in between the couple and uh, the wall. So I, I think I probably used a pink gel, um, you know, behind the bride and an aqua gel behind the groom. Uh, it's actually, you know, pretty simple. Just put those two flashes there, have them point straight up at the wall, um, and then just make it powerful enough that you can silhouette uh, the couple in front of them. So. That's that's pretty much it. I mean, I really like that it's two different colors, so it's kind of contrasting um, each other and just makes it a little bit more eye-catching instead of using, like, if I were to use, like, two red gels or two aqua gels or whatever. So. If you had to guess what your settings were for the audience at home, what oh, would you God. say for this photograph? Um, camera settings were probably, like, one hundredth of a second. It was dark and it was outside. Um, Oh, okay. Flat, flash power, probably, I'm guessing, like, 1 16th. Um, yeah. Awesome. Great. Love the, love the composition on this one, too. Mm -hmm. um, yes. All your, all your photographs are very, they have great composition. Um, tell us about how you uh, compose your, your photographs. Like, what is that? What is uh, it about, about your your art that, that you lends towards like the great composition. Right. Yeah. I wish I could give you some like articulate answer. Um, <laughs> I don't think about it that much. Um, I tend to put the couple, um, you know, in spots that I think works best where for this, 
in between them is this door uh, doorway to a courtyard. Um, so I, I kind of toyed with the idea of having them both on one side um, and, you know, kind of having them like kiss or have their foreheads together, like that whole thing. But there just really wasn't a lot of room. Um, so I decided, all right, I'll have like one couple on one side you know, or one person on one side, one person on the other. Um, and it worked out. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Donatas uh, asked you um, if uh, who's helping you with the flash setup um, or are you doing it alone? And I know you touched on that a little bit, but um, what you said you always have a second shooter with you. Um, what about yeah. assistant for like, did you did you have the second shooter set up those flashes? Did you do it? How does that work? Uh, I usually, you know, once in a while I'll have my second shooter like, you know, grab my light stand or move it or whatever. Uh, most of the time I'm just setting it up myself because I have the idea in my head. And by the time I relay that message to them and they pick up what I'm putting down, which takes forever because I make no sense most of the time, um, it's quicker to just do it myself and move the flashes or do whatever I need to. But having having an assistant is definitely helpful. Yeah. Um, Shiv said, do you find that in venues that are kind of crappy, choosing to do silhouettes, backlighting is a safe bet? Or is there another type of technique that you would recommend? Yeah, I mean, doing the silhouette thing, you know, with the gels is awesome because that works in pretty much any any location. Um, yeah, it's just really just using what you have and trying to, uh, you know, make it better with, you know, whatever modifiers you have, whatever gels you have, you know, whatever ambient light you have, um, just trying to, you know, improve it like one step at a time. If you can add something else in, great. If you don't need to add anything, even better. Yeah. Okay, great. great. Those are great questions. <clears throat> Keep them coming, guys. Thanks. Um, so here's one, here's another uh, sort of related to what should just asked, but um, you're outside, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but here's a silhouette. Great mm -hmm. composition. Um, and, you know, even in that composition, um, outside, silhouette, Love the emotion between the, the couple. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, this was uh, on Broad Street uh, in Center City, Philadelphia, where most of the time when you do wedding or engagement photos there, they're actually facing, or the photographer facing the other way and getting City Hall um, in the background. And I just wanted to kind of flip them and do something different. I saw the light was interesting behind them and would probably work for a silhouette. And we tried it, and it worked, and uh, the couple loved it. So, that's cool. Success. Yeah. Super rad. Always a success when the couple loves the photograph, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's, really, that's what we're going it, for. It's well, it's great when they love a photo that you love. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Cool. Another great photo <laughs> that shows emotion so well, and this is an example of you creating the, the sunset behind mm -hmm. you, is that right? Yeah, so this was taken, it was a cloudy day to begin with, and then by the time we were shooting, the sun was already down, um, so there was absolutely no sunlight coming in. Um, you know, but I, I really wanted to work on trying to mimic a sunset. Um, you know, so I have the, I had a, a full CTO gel with a mag sphere kind of up high behind the couple, pointing down, trying to just mimic what would happen in that situation with the sunset. Um, you know, so when I was saying before about zooming in helps, like if you saw this photo from, if I was shooting with like a 35 instead of like probably like 200 millimeters, uh, it would look ridiculous. Um, but zooming in, you get that flare. Uh, you know, so the flash is just literally right outside of, um, the frame kind of above their heads, um, which gives that flare and the look, you know, nice, nice, uh, beautiful rim lighting. I actually did use a soft box uh, as the front light to, you know, expose for them properly. Um, but yeah, I mean, I love it. They loved it. Yeah. Like what they did. Um, yeah, the emotion is gorgeous too. The lighting, the emotion, it's a total win. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. The, um, we have time for, for about two more. And um, 
we wanted to pull up, there it is, the infamous sparkler exit, yeah. which I think uh, a lot of people struggle with. And you mm -hmm. totally nailed this one. Yeah. <clears throat> about the movement, the expression. Yeah. How, how do you do your sparkle exits? Um, <laughs> yeah, so this, uh, I, I could tell you the, the real reason it worked, and that's because we did it at like 6 p.m. before the reception even started, so nobody was drunk and trying to light each other on fire yet. <laughs> um, that's probably the real secret. Um, but yeah, so I, I've i tried lots of different things with lighting sparkler exits. Um, I've tried everything from natural light to having like flash on camera pointing at them um, to backlighting them to I, i've tried it all um, and the thing that i find the most success with is using a combination of a uh, a mag sphere and a mag grid um, you know so the grid will kind of contain the light a little bit but the sphere will you know spread it far but not going everywhere um, so they kind of work hand in hand um, you know, so I just wanted the couple ideally lit. I didn't want the, you know, the flash to hit everybody. Um, I wanted to get a lot more ambient light in there. If you have, you know, just a sphere or a soft box or whatever, and you're lighting up everything, the sparklers are just going to be completely, um, you know, overpowered by your light. So that's why I just really wanted to have it just on that couple. Um, I mean, you can see it, I got a little bit of, you know, people's arms, but for the most part it was just the couple and that's what i was going for and it worked really well luckily they had like the best expression possible uh, yeah. which really just made the image that much better so so where was, the, uh, how was oh the, yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah so in in this situation i have the uh you know i think i actually had my second shooter holding you know a boom okay uh to the left with the light up as high as you know he could get it, just pointing straight down at the couple. Yeah. And in this situation, like if you have an assistant or a second shooter, like anybody that you can actually have holding your flash on a stand and have them actually like walk or jog with the couple, uh, okay. you'll get more shots instead of just having, you know, if you have the light stationary, you're really only gonna get like one or two shots yeah. once they hit a certain point. So having that move with the couple gives you a lot more leeway. Absolutely. That's perfect. Awesome. Great. Really great tips, Matt. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. This one, we, uh, we love the color in this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and again, the emotion. And the emotion, yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. Spot on. Yeah. Tell us about it. Uh, so this was, um, Anybody that's in you know, the mid-Atlantic mid area, uh, this is at Longwood Gardens. Um, during the holiday season, they have an insane holiday light show. Um, so like all the trees throughout the entire you know, area are all lit up, different colors and everything. So they're actually standing on one side of a tree um, you know, that's decorated with tons of lights. I'm on the other side, just shooting through the branches. Um, Pretty sure that I just used a, uh, you know, single flash with a sphere on it um, to highlight them, but not overpower anything. And I, I know you mentioned the emotion. I, I really try to just wait until they're doing something that's good. I, I don't try to like overpose um, or really even tell them what to do. I just say, hey, go stand over there and look cute, um, and then just hope for the best. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Gorgeous. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we're back. We're back. Off the screen share. <laughs> um, great. Well, Matt, we uh, we really appreciate you joining us today, and yeah, um, absolutely. Want to give you a chance to uh, give a shout out to anybody, uh, you know, companies that that you love to use their gear, or, uh, anybody you work with. You have any cool. Um, Things coming up, you wanna you wanna shout out? Go for it. Uh, I mean, I, I love Magmod stuff. Um, they're pretty much the only company that I really like use anything um, consistently. Uh, you can find my work at macroberfighter.com. Um, my blog, I, I post 
usually like five times a week during the busy season with different shoots and everything. Um, and uh, Instagram, I usually put my latest work on there. That's just at Mac Ruber photo. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I've really nothing else planned except for tons of weddings and editing <laughs> and a teething baby. That's, that's my agenda. Yeah. That, that's plenty of work for anyone. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So yeah, we really encourage you guys to, uh, to check out, uh, you got a couple of comments before we, oh God. before we hit it. Uh, Daniel Moyer says, nice stuff, Matt. Well done. And Laura Thanks, buddy. says that she's your BFF. <laughs> <laughs> she's close. She, she's working her way up the ladder. <laughs> nice. Thanks for all your comments, guys. We really yeah. appreciate it. Uh, Matt, thanks so much for joining us. And yeah, absolutely. Uh, see uh, a lot of Matt's work on on, on uh, slrlounge.com. If you go to the uh, SLR Lounge Awards, uh, you can also check out his his profile on slrlounge.com. He had a recent uh, article feature, and um, check him out on Instagram, Matt Gruber Photo. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just want to remind everyone that you can still get your award submissions in for the March awards, mm -hmm. slrlounge.com slash awards. So get those in, guys. And uh, we look forward to you being back here in two weeks right. with Megan Allen. Yeah. So thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, thank you. Hopefully it wasn't too bad for you. It was, it was perfect. <laughs> fantastic, Matt. Fantastic. Have a beautiful day, everyone.